Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, first things first, Happy New Year 2023. Uh, hope everyone had a great uh, past Christmas holiday or, or holiday in general, and even a better upcoming year for everybody. So as you can see, uh, today we have a very exciting unboxing of a lot of things. Uh, this has been on my radar for quite a while. Now, this is a Neo Geo AES console. Uh, the AES just basically stands for um, Advanced Entertainment System. And this is actually the, I guess, the home variant, so to speak, of the arcade version called the Neo Geo MVS, which means multi uh, video system. Now, just a little bit of insight before we get started with unboxing. Uh, the Neo Geo has been around since I think even the late 80s and for sure 90s. Uh, I was born in the early 80s, so I can't remember the full back back history, but um, yeah, so the Neo Geo AES I think came out in 1991, 92. I can't remember. This is the Japanese version, right? But um, yeah, so back in the day, Growing up with my brother, we were big, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis uh, owners, right? But unfortunately, this guy right here was always out of our range. This thing was behemothly expensive. expensive. I think going for, I don't know, $650 back in 1990, 91 or something, which with, I guess, inflation today, all that good stuff, it's about over a thousand, maybe 1200. I think, I, I don't know exactly, but the console is very expensive, uh, simply put, back in the 90s. So that's that's a reason why the Neo Geo was more expensive than the Super Nintendo and Genesis back in the day, because it's, you're technically buying a home arcade console, right? Very little differences between this and the, the cabinet MVS versions. So just to kick off what I have today before we kind of unbox everything, I'm going to unbox it in the order of, I guess, general size, right? So here are some cables, controllers, accessories, games, and uh, joystick, and the actual console itself. Uh, this video will probably be very long, so I will add chapter breaks between each major item. But just to kick it off, let's go and start, right? Um, with the, I guess, the, uh, the modern accessories for Neo Geo, right? So this right here is an accessory called uh, Neo to USB by RetroFrog. This isn't really for the Neo Geo per se. What it is, is it's, it's basically just an adapter to hook up Neo Geo uh, arcade joysticks, the CD controller and the, the um, CD controller itself to a PC, right? Or e even like the later console, like the PS3, PS2, whatever. You might need a Brooks adapter, but I, I actually bought this to play my emulated games and ROMs, I guess, on the Steam Deck. Out of the box, this and the CD controller work out of the box on the Steam Deck, right? So whenever I play Samurai Showdown, Metal Slug, this works out of the box. It's great. You, you won't need a Brooks adapter in addition to this. Now for the other consoles like PS3 or Switch, you might need it, I don't know, but I got it just for the Steam Deck, just because the Steam Deck, as some of you know, is an emulation powerhouse console. So yeah, so again, while this is a Neo Geo product, or it's for it, it's not, it's not actually for this. It's actually using the controllers back then for more modern consoles. Uh, and it comes with a little retro frog sticker here. Hopefully the camera can focus on it. So let me set, set that aside. Um, next up um, is this thing, right? This is a um, um, an octo plate for the Neo Geo CD controller and the actual, you know, the rectangular version joysticks from this this console. Out of the like like factory from this and the the, the original standard controller. It's actually a square gate, so playing fighting games could be kind of hard because it's best if you can get a total eight-way octagon shape, right? Um, so yeah, so this is not metal, like like the I think the the, the factory plates are made of. The shape is the same with the drill, or I'm sorry, the screw holes, 
but this is like hard plastic. I don't know what type of gray plastic, but it's, it's, it's pretty durable. Yeah, so uh, later on, not in this video, but maybe a future video, I'll, I will do another video where I install this after opening up the controller here or here and taking those out and swapping out the square gate with the um, uh, 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 octagon shape. Cool. And also at the end of this video, uh, I'll, I'll, or not in this video, but in the down in the description, I will give a link to all the places where I order everything that I will be unboxing today. Going on with more of the modern accessories. Now these, um, you don't need these to play the console, but I got it because basically what this is is um, this is a Neo Geo. Um, SCART RG, oh, I'm sorry, Neo Geo RGB SCART cable made by Insurrection uh, Company. Now, I have the Sega Saturn version of SCART, and if, if, if for the folks that don't know, SCART RGB uh, is, is amazing uh, video output. It's, uh, it's really sharp, the colors are really great. Um, it's much better than the, you know, out of the box, I think, composite cables. So this will plug straight into it, and then goes to SCART, and then the SCART will plug into here. This is a separate company. This is from Retro Tink. But it's basically a SCART adapter. I don't know if you can see it in the lettering. This goes from SCART to HDMI out. And you will definitely need a um, power source, which is what this is. This is to power the little box here. So this is a Retro Tink 2X SCART adapter. Uh, if you go to Retro Tink's website, they have like other adapter sets where there's more than just a SCART, there's like a combination of RGB component uh, and other, other type of adapters that you might need for other consoles. They, they also sell uh, adapters for Sega Saturn, Super Nintendo, Genesis, all that good stuff. So yeah, so, and this is an awesome RGB SCART cable. It, it, it's shielded and uh, I believe uh, this too, the quality is great compared to the cheaper Amazon eBay stuff. Like, who was it? Um, Pound and Hypekin. Th those are cheaper. Like, they're not even SCART cables, I don't think. Oh, yeah, they are. I think they are SCART, but the quality is so low. I actually had those before, and it's not very sharp. It's, it's, it's okay at best, but these are amazing when you put these two together. All right, and here's a power adapter for the uh, retro tank. You don't need to use this same power, or this power adapter, power adapter specifically. Uh, it, it's powered by um, by a uh, micro USB, right? Not not a C or A, but a micro USB B mini. All right, cool. All right, now that we have all of the uh, so to speak modern accessories out out of the window, let's talk about the new stuff or the old stuff going back in time. So this is a. Uh, memory card for the Neo Geo AES, and technically for the MBS RT cabinets. Uh, I, I got this on eBay. Actually, most stuff you see are on eBay, but some of them are from uh, other retailers, which again, I will outline in the description below. This is a pretty mint condition memory card for the Neo Geo. All right, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. It's complete. It comes with the uh, manual, the, the, the memory card itself, uh, and it comes with the uh, inserts, the plastic sleeve, manual, all that stuff. So I'm pretty excited as my initial kickoff to starting to collect for the Neo Geo, which by the way is expensive, but if you kind of just plan accordingly, it's not so bad. So here are, are the items inside this. Here's a box, of course, as I've been you know, showing on the screen. Here's a manual. It's pretty crisp. I don't even think it's ever been opened fully, except, except just now by me. So yeah. So uh, you can save your games onto the memory card on this console. And then you can also then bring it to the arcades and I guess pick up from there. I don't know what all games are compatible with it, but I'm pretty sure things like fighting games and uh, I guess sports stuff, but uh, for the most part, it should be compatible. <laughs> this is just a um, warning list. 
All right, so that, that's the manual. Here's the inner, I guess, cardboard sleeve, right? It's pretty, uh, pretty nice. There's no like tears or anything, so I'm really excited the condition that this item is in, given everything you see here is at least a good 30 years old. Here's a, like a plastic pocket sleeve. I guess when you transport it to the arcade or wherever you're, you're going with this adapter or memory card. Pretty mint. And here's the actual memory card itself. This is cool because this was even before the PlayStation 1's time, which I thought was original or one of the original systems to use a memory card, but no, the Neo Geo was. Pretty slick, right? Good condition overall. Very shiny. It almost feels, everything here feels like new almost, or at least I try to collect things mint as possible, but not break, but not breaking the bank. Some Japanese um, verbiage, don't know what it says, but it probably just has some type of warning or instructions. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. This is a, I guess, serial or model number NEO dash IC8. And this is the direction you plug it in. The direction you plug it in is, I think, on the right side of the system. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty pr pretty nice uh, accessory. Uh, I like it. I, I think that if this uses the battery, I think it's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it in the video or, yeah. So it uses a lithium battery and the RAM is 2K, wow, 2K bytes. That's, that's crazy compared to what we can do today, but Still, the idea of you know SNK doing this back in the day is amazing because we still use the same technology now, all right? So, all right, let me just kind of put it back in the box. Uh, I know you can buy third-party memory cards as well, just because this is kind of hard to find. It's not hard to find, uh, but it's also not something you technically need because given all the games on Neo Geo are technically just arcade games, so there's really not much to save other than, I guess, score and settings, I guess. Yeah, so this is the memory card. Pretty nice condition overall. Um, uh, let me see, I guess we'll go over this guy next. Now, this C uh, Neo Geo CD controller and Neo Geo CD controller pro which is technically a joystick arcade you don't need these two for this in fact these two were released like a couple or i don't know four years later or so on the neo geo cd version which is technically similar to this except it was cd based right uh this is cartridge based this is like the original neo geo i guess console uh i i do know for a fact though that not this but this in the later versions of this specific console, the cartridge console, they did kind of do like a second version of this or something, or a repack where instead of the traditional, you know, the iconic rectangle arcade joystick, it came with one of these, which is more of a circular shape, which we will, or I will show you later in the video. Getting back to this, here's a box for this. This is also pretty good condition, given that it's, you know, 30 plus years old, right? Um, I try again. I try to collect mint items as much as possible, just because it's good to have you know a piece of history sitting on your shelf, All right? Something fun about this is um, a Neo Geo, or not Neo Geo specifically, but I, I think Game Freak. They re released this few years ago under the Neo Geo Mini controller, right? But there was, a, it's pretty controversial because the, um, the analog D-pad, you'll see it a little bit. It, uh, it wasn't clicky. It, it didn't have micro switches like what this does. And the button orientation was completely different as well. I'll show you what I mean because I have that controller as well. In fact, hold on, before I forget, let me go get it real quick. Yeah, 
yeah, so this came with the, the box, of course, in the original plastic baggie, which is awesome. I, I'm one of those collectors. I'm not like a purist, but at the same time, I do want to try to collect the best condition and contents as possible without breaking the bank. But yeah, so here, here's the, uh, the original uh, Neo Geo CD controller. Again, not, not required to play this because this guy already comes with it. But check it out, if you listen closely, it's, it's octagon shape. It's a D-pad, or is it? It's a hybrid D-pad slash analog. It feels great, All right? C D A B. Select start. No shoulder buttons at the time because this was based on the Neo Geo, which is more like the the four finger layout. But Neo Geo CD is more compact. At the time, it was it was becoming more modern per se. I guess the PlayStation was also at, or released around, what, 1994, 96? It was, it was also four button layout as well. And the Super Nintendo. Here's a bat, pretty clean. Very, very excited at the condition this this uh, this item was uh, received in. Oh yeah, this is something interesting. Uh, you probably wouldn't figure it out, but, or, or I didn't figure it out until I got it, but if you notice, it's, it's not a, your tra traditional like straight flat surface. The D-pad area is kind of, I guess, recessed downward, but the D-pad, I'm sorry, the buttons is recessed down, but the D-pad is up, if you look closely, right? So that's interesting. It's not straight, it has more like a incline, right? Or decline, depending which direction you're looking at it. So that's a pretty cool little touch. Oh, the, the um, plug is a, I think it's a 15 pin head. So very similar like design as like uh, Super Nintendo and PlayStation and Genesis back in the day. Oh yeah, so let me show you uh, what I was talking about earlier. So again, this is the original Neo Geo CD controller, right? This one is in the recently released Neo Geo Mini controller, which I guess it's a replica in terms of looks and aesthetics, but not 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 actual functionality. Because if you look really close, from a quick glance, they look the same. But if you look closer, the original <clears throat> the original Neo Geo CD controller on the left side has more of a slight texture to it. I don't know if the light is helping. But on the re-release or remake or redesign, whatever, or not redesign, but re-release, I guess, the finish is smoother, right? Almost identical, except, again, the, um, the paint finish on the black is rougher or more texturized, better grip on the original, smoother on the uh, mini. There's a clicky, but on the uh, re-release, there's no clicky. A, it's a full circle. But on the original, it's actually like an octagon. So that's cool. Uh, there was a funny, well not funny, but there was like a controversial Twitter post. I think somebody asked like, how come the re-release is not micro switch or, um, you know, whatever. And I think one of the developer or designers or manufacturers of the, this controller said it was too expensive. So that, that that's kind of crazy. Right, because how could they do it back in the day, but not now. Going back to this, uh, another thing quickly different, uh, quickly noticeably different are the button layouts A and B, C and D on the original, the new version, A, B, C, D. Now, while the color coordination is the same based on the letter, like A is red, green is C, blah blah blah, the placement is different. I don't understand. I don't understand why. Maybe they're trying to go after the. Like, I don't know, like, like, I don't know about you, but whenever I'm playing games, attack is usually A, jump is usually B, if you're playing like a brawler or a platformer. So maybe that's why. This is more like the, how do I put it, Super Nintendo style, where, well, I guess technically B is Nintendo's main action, but it's basically two rows this way and this way. But on, he, on the newer version, it's more like columnized. It, 
that's not too much of a deal, uh, deal breaker, but this is. This is oct oct uh, Octagon Movement Clicky. Feels great, by the way. This version, though, it's just perfectly circular motion. And also, oh, the travel is more, too. Uh, I can't test it because I don't have it hooked up, but I did test it in my Steam Deck. The actuator or the traveling whatever, it is pretty long. So that's one reason why I don't really like this too much. I mean, it's yeah, it is only 20 bucks or 25 on Amazon. But this, the travel is a lot less. Oh. Here, let me see if I can do it over the camera. It's kind of hard, but you can kind of tell, right? Let me, sh uh, let me see real quick. Can you tell the travel distance? That's crazy, right? But I don't know, maybe Neo Geo or Game Freak didn't want to invest too much precise redesign of the original because this was meant to be more as a, I don't know, like a, like a quote, toy or keepsake. I don't know. But yeah, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, difference between the two. Moving forward, moving forward, uh, to kick off my new Neo Geo collection, I, I started with, you know, three games that I, re I finally remember playing at my local uh, arcade slash, like, uh, you know, convenience store, right, <laughs> back in the day. So I picked up uh, uh, Fatal Fury 1, Right, there's uh, Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, and Joe Hagashi. Uh, this is the Japanese version as well. And I, I will go a little bit later in why I picked Japanese over the US versions of this. But here's a box. No. This seller is great too. I got I got these three on eBay, and they they're very top notch. I I purchased from from them before. They always, aside from good condition items they also pre-wrap it or they wrap it with like cellophane their products are high quality it is also complete as well you know with the manual the cartridge uh and i think the original plastic baggies that wraps around the um, manual this is art of fighting art of fighting one mega shock the 100 omega shock or i'm sorry the 100 mega shock Ryo, Robert, Jack, uh, I can't remember his name, King, John, Lee, Mickey, I think. Uh, Mr. Big is not on here. And Mr. Karate, which is his dad, I think. I can't remember, it's been a while, but um, yeah, so that's Art of Fighting 1. And of course, every collection needs to have this game. Samurai Spirits, better known in USA as Samurai Showdown. One thing about the Samurai Showdown, um, actually all SNK games, their artwork, especially the character design, it's, I don't know who designed it or who illustrated it, but they always had like a funny character illustration. It's like hyper-realistic, but cartoony at the same time. Um, it's pretty funny, but yeah, check out Ho Hoamaru's Wicked Haircut. Or, I'm sorry, there, there's a big glare on the screen. I'll, I'll unbox it, unwrap it, but um, yeah, it, it's funny. Whoever did the original um, SNK character artwork. If you know who did it, you know, maybe you can uh, post it down in the, in the comments below. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is Samurai Showdown. Oh, and by the way, this is the first time I've ever picked up a Neo Geo, so I had no idea how big the cartridge cases were and how heavy. I can tell you though, boy, these are heavy, almost three pounds each. These are like hefty. These are definitely show pieces on your shelf, right? Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and crack open one of them and then we'll, we'll do the other three or other two. So let's go ahead and open up uh, Fatal Fairy. And I apologize if there's a large glare on the screen because the seller wrapped it with cellophane, but once it's unwrapped, it should be a little bit easier to see the, the, the cover. So this is exciting. Never held an actual Neo Geo cartridge in my hand before. So, first of 
first time doing it here. So kick back and enjoy the background Neo Geo music while I try to unravel these um, unboxings. So while we're waiting on me doing this, um, uh, how many of you um, like to collect from Neo Geo versus, you know, just buying Neo Geo games off of like the Nintendo Switch store, eShop, PlayStation store? Because I know Neo Geo, unfortunately, it, it, is a it is a very expensive console to collect for, right? Um, and that's too bad because a lot of the games are great, it's just they're, they always were out of reach from a lot of people back in the 90s and still today, and their prices today are absor uh, absorbent. I, 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 I'm much older now than, you know, of course, when I, than when I was 35 plus years ago, but even today, these guys are still expensive, but I can, I can afford them now. I don't plan to get every game. I just want to get games that I remember playing arcades, and thankfully, it's the earlier titles like Samurai Showdown 1, 2, Fate of Fury, Art of Fighting, World Heroes, which I don't have yet, Metal Slug. But, uh, but man, Neo Geo games, prices get expensive quickly. Holy crap. Metal Slug, unfortunately, is one of those where Metal Slug is, I think, as of today, uh, January 2023, those Metal Slug games, especially part one, goes for at least 4,000 plus. Uh, three to 4,000, oh my God. So I don't know how that's gonna work. I, I don't plan to buy the converted version where it looks like this, but it's like a convert version or whatever you call those, or the Neo SD. I, I don't wanna do that. If I did that, I, I, I should just go ahead and just download or you know, continue playing my emulated versions. But I want to play original hardware, software, and accessories. I don't want to, you know, go download or go buy like a flash cart just to play games. It doesn't make sense to me. All right. Hopefully, you can see it better now. The uh, the box. Well, it's thirty year, or thirty or forty years old. Wait, I don't know how. When did this come out? Let me see. I don't know, but if this guy came out in 1991 or so, this probably came out around then, so maybe early 90s. But wow, the condition is still awesome. It's a very thick laminate plastic, and the artwork is still pretty sharp. And here's the outer casing. So here's a... Uh... All right, here we go. Boom. Wow. Yeah, so it comes with the original uh, plastic baggies. That's crazy. Actually, uh, I, I, I've i never seen a, a game to come with the plastic baggie for the manual. So that, that's pretty trippy, right? There's the um, manual, which is very nice. It has like a sheen over the text, the Battle of Destiny, right? Even though it's... Uh, not brand new, perfect condition. I actually like some of this crinkled, worn look. It just kind of gives it that character of used or very old retro. As long as it doesn't have like ripped pages or you know people writing in it, totally fine. Oh snap, any Bogart. I guess these are some of his moves, his elbow dash, his flying kick, Joe Hagashi. Uh, the map. I think his name is Duck. I don't know who he is, but he reminds me of Balrog or in Bison from uh, Street Fighter 2. Oh, by the way, oh, Billy Kane. Um, I didn't know this, but the this game was designed or created by somebody who was a part of the original Street Fighter development team. So that's why this game, I guess it looks similar to Street Fighter. Now, of course, it doesn't have all eight, eight characters you can use. You can only use three. But it's cool that there's a Street Fighter developer on this game. It's funny how Terry Bogard has evolved over the years. Uh, 
I mean, look at this, right? He looks like, he looks cold with his jacket, right? He looks like he wants to go home, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, so the original Terry Bogart, he, his, his iconic red jacket, it's more like he, it had sleeves, right? Or rolled up in jeans. Let me show you real quick the original uh, Terry Bogart. I'm sorry, not the original Terry Bogard look, but the new one. This this is an Amiibo, right? This came out last year or year before under the Nintendo Amiibo line, but you can kind of just tell how he evolved. Um, so he has a jean jacket, the cap, the long blonde hair, but here, uh, he, the jacket sleeve is, is uh, rolled up to his elbows, but here the I guess in the later Street, uh, not Street Fighter, Fatal Fury 2, I think, uh, he, he does, rip, I think, I think Fatal Fury 2, he, he has a, like a sleeveless jacket, so that's cool. I think the Fatal Fury um, special, he also is has ripped shoulder or ripped arm parts, but I, I can't remember. Anyways, the point is, it's just cool to see Terry Borgar evolve over the years, right? Now, this is the ongoing design for Terry. Hey, come on, come on. Rising Taco. So that's cool, right? Um, it's, it's, this is awesome. Here's a cartridge. Oh boy, this thing is huge. Comes with a baggie too. The baggie's kind of has a little bit of some indention, but that's okay. Oh, something I just noticed too. I forgot. The inner plastic tray is in pretty good condition. I think you can take it out too. Let me see. Yeah, you can take it out. I don't want to take it out. It might be glued, but you can take it out if you really try. So here's the cartridge. Wow, this thing is huge. My only experience with other cartridges are from the likes of like, you know, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, but this thing is ginormous. It's like a VCR, but a little bit wider. I think a VCR ends around where the grooves are, but add another inch and a quarter. That's, that's how big the Neo Geo. Cartridges. The sticker looks good. The 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 label. A little bit of scuff, but that's okay. This is a really old product, and it kind of shows some of the you know usage of it. Huh? Something is shaking. Oh, this thing right here, I guess. Oh yeah, from what I've just kind of research uh, again I'm not like a technical you know person but I guess because there are so many I don't know chips or motherboards or components that it required two um, two chip parts I guess I don't know <laughs> I don't know what the word is but yeah it required two so that's 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 crazy how powerful Neo Geo was for for it at its time yeah so that's cool I like this this is bad. Kind of wish though the battle of destiny is a little bit more prominent from the front. It's kind of hard to see, right? That's all right. Awesome. So that that is the first game. This is Neo Geo. My first Neo Geo game, or one of the first three games. Oh, oh sorry. Awesome. So huge. I don't want to crease it when I shut it. Too bad there wasn't like a little clip or something to keep the, the manual from floating around, but that's all right. This is really awesome. So that's my first game unboxing. Here's the next one. Samurai Showdown Spirits, or Samurai Spirits, I'm sorry. So again, we're going to unbox this one, just like the way we did it from Fatal Fury 1. Also, uh, Going back to the type of games I'm going to collect, I'm going to collect most of the games I played growing up. Thankfully, 
most of them are the, on the cheaper end. But there are some games I want to get or somehow get for the Neo Geo that I really want to play, like post Turtle Blade Star. But those things are, wow, those are expensive. Those are like, I don't know, three ish thousand or something. So I don't know how I'm going to play those. Maybe I won't buy them. Maybe I'll just resort to just getting them on the Nintendo Switch or something. But yeah, those games I want to. I want to physically own just because such a um, such an amazing shooter based on the reviews and videos I've seen. And get this, I didn't know, but Blazing Star is, I guess, a sequel to Polestar. I mean, I guess given the name Blazing Star Polestar, but the word star, the Blazing Star is two words, but Polestar is one word. So, but yeah, I, I didn't know that. So somebody on the uh, YouTube review channel said, yeah, those games are related. I don't know if they're related storyline but they're it's technically a related like in terms of sequel wow this one is uh not playing easy to get to open here's a fun fact so this video <clears throat> video you're watching right now originally i record the video where I unbox it from the original shipping box, right? So that was a long recording. That was like an hour and a half. So I actually ended up not uploading it. I have it for my own purposes, but I don't have it to upload. It's just too long. I think people want to see the actual, you know, item unbox. So, so here's the game. Again, just like Fatal Fairy, massive box, very heavy. It's like a good three-ish pounds or so. Oh. Now you can check out Homero's Wicked Haircut. Look at that. Wow. Imagine walking downtown with this type of haircut with a huge katana like that. You know, those big old baggy pants. <laughs> there's, there's a front. And what, what does it say? Um, Samurai Ninja in the Knights Gather in Japan, the land of mystery and magic to lock horns and defeat the Malevent Satan's Shogun. Amaksa, or what is it uh, Shido di Amaksa? I think I said that right. Maybe I, maybe I butchered the name wrong. Here here's the uh, the backside. Very awesome artwork. I love this look. Hatoranti Galford. Oh, man, I forgot his name. And he's like a Kabuki, but I forgot his actual name. Nokoruru, Wanfu, Charlotte, Tam Tam, Earthquake. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jinji? Jinki? Uh, Yukio Tachibana? I think I said that right. Jude? And the iconic Hoamaru. See? Oh, <laughs> going back to the illustrations, check out his hair, right? This is more like the actual like Japanese, uh, I guess, artwork style. Right? But if you go here, this is his like porcupine haircut. It's like he just woke up and forgot to style it with, 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 with uh, some surfer gel. This is 118 megs, I guess. Fighting game. This is awesome. Uh, Katana battle action game. This is so cool looking. Wow. Amazing. And I guess uh, indicates memory card works okay. Or you can transfer it. Phone number, barcode. Let's go and open this one too. Again, just like the other one, comes in a baggie. Samurai Spirits. Neo Geo System NGH-045 Samurai Spirits User Manual. This is cool. Oh, there, there she is. There he, the last boss. So hard. Wow, this guy just ate your quarters. I don't know. I don't know if I even recall beating him. He has like that really like cheap hits where like he'll use the little fist or I'm sorry, the little orb and attack you or even like the fast, it's like an Ihana style like rapid punches. Oh wow, he just drains your energy away. So hard. But now that I have this, I won't be using quarters anymore. There's a character select screen, I guess. And I love these little illustrations. This is so fun. This is something that 
today's games in console like the Switch and the PS5, Xbox, they don't have manuals anymore. That's too bad. I mean, some special edition games do, like limited run games have them for the most part, but not all. This is cool, right? It's just showing you you can do this or that, this and this, where you can kind of like, you know, right when it says uh, uh, round one in Guardi fight or whatever, you can lock in. You know, whoever has the quicker tapping power breaks the other ones. Uh, not, well, they don't break their weapon, but they break their guard and their weapons fly away. You have to kind of recapture it. Uh, you kills uh, apple slicing thing. This guy, uh, what, is, uh, what is his name? Starts with a K. I, I, I can't remember, but yeah. Not in this version, but I think Samurai Showdown 2 or 3 or something. You can fight him, I think. Right? I can't remember exactly, but if any of you know that, just uh, post down in the comments which game and which version. And how do you fight this guy? He's the referee, I guess, in the match. Yeah, so just a lot of fun artwork. This guy, he runs in the background. Sometimes he'll toss bombs, food to, you know, heal a little bit. Um, of course, though, he'll always throw energy towards the, end the computer, but he'll throw bombs at you. Oh, this is an awesome looking collage. Wow, badass. So fun. Wamaru, Nakoruru, Yukio, Jubei. Alfred and his little dog, wolf dog or husky. Ah, oh, man, I forgot his name. He's a kabuki, but I forgot his actual name name. Wanfu with a huge uh, sword. Charlotte. Tom Tom Earthquake. Jinji? Ginky? <laughs> and Galford. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Hanzo. Hanzo and Golfer, this guy right here, and this guy over here, play very similar. While they don't play like Ken and Ryu, they are kind of like duplicates of one another with, with some minor different movesets. Like he has, he throws like electric shurikens, but, uh, but Hanzo throws, I think, large uh, stars right here. But in general, they play similar. I think in the later iteration, like Samurai Showdown 3 or 4, they're totally different. Even the animations are different, too. Warning signs. Oh, cool. What is this? Uh, huh. I don't know. This is the back. Awesome. Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. It's like walking down through memory lane, except I never had this. So this is kind of like playing for the very first time. This is technically brand new to me. All right, here we go. Baggy, too. This is great. Okay. Wow, it's so heavy. I love how heavy it is. It's like, this is like something you really can hold, right? It's not like a CD or or even a digital where you can't even hold digital content. But here's the front. Nice artwork here. Samurai Spirits. Nice little collage. It's ginormous, oh my god. SK made in Japan. Thankfully, these three games did not set me back too much uh, because these are the earlier releases. They're pretty cheap. Uh, but uh, to, to kick it off, uh, buying three at the same time was expensive, but not nearly ex expensive as like buying, um, I don't know, uh, Sengoku 3 by itself or Polestar. Oh my gosh, those games are like. Three, three, four thousand alone. So I gotta figure out how to get those one day. Somehow original, not not a conversion or, or, or any other means. I want the original somehow. Maybe I'll, I don't know. Maybe I'll pray it'll just drop from the, from the sky onto my lap. But yeah. So that's the first one or the second one. Huge. Going on to this one. This is the last game. Uh, this is Art of Fighting. This one, um, I have to say, even though this is probably not a lot of people's favorite, I actually love this game. Um, it, it might be mainly because it is my first 
Neo Geo game I ever played in arcades. Uh, there was a junior store which uh, uh, people from down South Florida call for gas station or convenience stores. They had a uh, the first, at least to me, the first MBS Neo Geo. At the, at the time, I didn't know what it was. I didn't care what it was called. I just wanted to play it. But it, it was my first time experiencing a Neo Geo cabinet, right? And uh, this was the first one I picked from the selection of the four. I can't remember the four. Was it Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, Super Baseball 2020, and one other game I can't remember? But this one, though, was the first one I ever dropped quarters into playing. A lot of people may not like this because the, the, the animation frame rate is so bad. It's so bad. It's like, it's very choppy. Uh, but I don't know. I had fond memories of it, right? I mean, back in the day, I didn't know what a good game was just because, I mean, compared to today's standards, yeah, we have like, you know, Tekken and Street Fighter and Guilty Gear. But at the time, we didn't know what a perfect fighting game was. But this game was unique because it required you to preserve or strategically use the chi system without going, without losing it all. Because if you, if your chi system goes all the way down, you can't do special moves. You can rebuild it up or your spirit meter, whatever you call it. But by the time you build it back up, you're probably, you're probably going to be dead because the, the, the damage value in getting hit in this game is pretty brutal. Six or seven hits, you're out. So that, that's, that's pretty, um unfortunate but in general the game itself is it brings me so much nostalgia right here's ryo fighting robert which to me reminds me of ken or ryu or ryu fighting guile in a background very similar to guile's level and guile's level she fighter too is like he's fighting uh, in front of like a uh, f14 f15 jet but here he's fighting in front of uh, a helicopter here's the side not a very flattering image to me it's like uh, this guy is about to crack some nuts on Robert's mid animation doing a spin kick. Yeah, so let's go ahead and open this one. This one, though, um, has a little bit of plastic wrinkle, but that's okay. I mean, it's kind of nice. Not nice, but it's kind of it's kind of fun to see how these games wear over the years. I mean, the the, the spine and the front is perfect. This is just a little bit wrinkly. I don't know if you can tell, but no big deal. As long as it's not ripped or stained, whatever. Wow, check that out. Holy cow. Ro Robert and uh, Ryan. I do plan to get Art of Fighting 2 next. It, it probably is one of my next games I'm gonna get from my Neo Geo. Art of Fighting 2 improved in so many ways. It's faster, the spirit meter is a little bit better more characters that you can play more than just these two you can because in this version you can only play as these two characters i think i seen a version or maybe it was a home console and super nintendo or something where you can play as the other like the boss characters too i think well it's like it has like a mini comic book or oh, open story Lee fighting, oh, I'm sorry, King fighting Lee. That's cool. Memory cards, okay. Oh, oh yeah, here's a fun fact. I think uh, Ryo, 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 this guy, uh, Capcom, I guess because Art of Fighting technically, I guess, quote, copied Street Fighter 2. Uh, Capcom made a parody of this guy by creating the character Dan. Uh, you know Dan from Street Fighter Alpha era, where he's wearing the peak gi. Um, it's like Dan's like a, a combination of these two, where he has like Ryo's look with the black inner t-shirt, peak gi, and but Robert's ponytail. That's pretty funny. And I think this guy is actually based after Steven Seagal, maybe. I I don't know that for sure, but yeah. So Dan is based on I think Robert. The bonus level is fun where you I guess you chop or swipe some beer bottles cracking ice and shooting the, the huge fireballs here which later I guess Capcom kind of adopted for the later exaggerated shoot fighter versus X-Men or even X-Men to 
Marvel superheroes, you know, exaggerated projectiles and stuff. So. This game is also great, to me at least, because the character sprites are huge. It zooms in when you're fighting claws, but it zooms out a little bit when you're, walk when you're further away from the character. So that's cool. Man, I love these illustrations. So much uh, nostalgia. <laughs> it's like the same art of fighting, too. I think it's just part of the design of the bar here. Okay, so you know what? I think you can play as, as them, the bosses, because they're showing you the movesets. Interesting. I don't know. Again, like, I like this game, but I actually never went that far into figuring out how to play them because when you first play the story mode, you can only pick these two. Maybe on the home version or something. I don't know. You can, if they are unlocked after you beat the game, maybe. I don't know. So that's cool. Venom Strike. Venom Strike. Oh my god, this, this, this is the bastard right here. This drop kick goes across the entire screen and it's mega damage. It's crazy. Fire suplex. Okay. That's cool. It's like a rapid kick and then to a back fist. He looks like Gaio, but he's totally different from Gaio. That's cool. I like that. And here's a cartridge. So just like the other ones, this one is heavy as heck. I want to say the weight is like maybe two or three PlayStation 5 controllers. It just shows you how heavy this thing is. Here's a front of the art or cartridge with artwork. This one's actually very clean. I want to say even though the back of the box is plastic, it's kind of wrinkly. The condition of this cartridge compared to the other two, it looks brand new. So that's cool. Very heavy. Very, very uh, nostalgia slash retro vibe to it. All right. So we have two more boxes. The last one's gonna be mega huge, so I'm not sure how much table space I, I need to get for him. So we might have to do like, Video cuts, I don't know what we will see, but when I get there. All right, let's put Terry Bogart aside up here somewhere. Mm. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I, I invested in some clear box protectors. You have to, you have to fold it because it comes unfolded. But this, I got three of them to protect the game boxes. So when you when you open it and you fold it to cover your box, you have to take off the film. That that's cool. Right. I mean the games like compared to the other Neo Geo games, they're not expensive. But compared to just by today's standards, uh, they are expensive. Like for example, um, Fatal Fury Two, or I'm sorry, my Fatal Fury game I showed you earlier. That was roughly around two hundred. Samurai Showdown was about 110, and then uh, Art of Fighting was about 190. So by Neo Geo standards, those are cheap prices, but by today, just general games prices, very expensive because PS5 games and Xbox games today cost 80 bucks. Or I'm sorry, 70, but 80 or 90 with, with DLC. So, all right. So here's this unboxing. This is a Neo Geo CD controller. Again, not required to play this, but you can use this for this. Um, pretty good condition there's some creases here but that's okay it has a nice overall shine and box stuff to it again I try not to cut anything that's ripped too much but at least have it, it retains the general integrity of the you know what it's supposed to be so no, no no flapping dangling boxes or flaps there are some creases you can probably tell on the camera maybe but not like ripped or anything so oh I think my background music is finished. Let me uh, restart background music again. All right, cool. So, so this one is, is exciting because this one is also, I think, complete, where it includes the original Styrofoam. And boy, Styrofoam back in the 90s were everything. 
love the squeakiness. But by today's standards, they're actually a world, or they're not an earth-friendly material because it, it's not biodegradable, I think. But it's just fun to see styrofoam after so many years. I don't think this ever came with a manual, just because I, when I was looking, I never saw one fully. I mean, I, I saw them with styrofoam the baggie, but I never seen a manual version. Same thing with the the controller from earlier as well. Okay, oh, just set this aside. So that's the styrofoam. Styrofoam looks fully intact, no broken pieces. This is very good. Wow. This is my first time holding a Neo Geo like controller of any kind, so this is a great experience for me. So here's the uh, what's called the Neo Geo CD controller or arcade joysticks slash the bean because the general shape looks like a you know like a like a black bean or red bean or you know pinto bean whatever lima bean. A lot of people though, from what I read, don't like this one compared to what came with this, which we will see in a little bit. I don't know why, maybe because it it's a little more compact and it doesn't sit in the lap as well, maybe. But uh, I, I, I think it's, I mean, just looking at it, it's fine because usually I don't play a game or arcade sticks in my lap anyways. I play it on the table or a low sitting, you know, like, uh, like, like a, it's like an end table for a couch. So select, start, A, B, C, D. Now, this has the general format of the arcade placement. I think though on the arcade version, A is down, it's like slanted down, but A, B, and C were like straight across. Here it has like a slight curve to it, which is fine because it's molded after your fingers. And the joystick is a square gate. So the white octagon gate that we looked at at the very beginning of the video, I will either install it here or on this one, or buy another one, so I, I will have it both, but... Uh, so something too, if you notice, this has, like, the knob, has like a thumb indentation, I guess. So you play like this. So I guess, hypothetically, you'll be doing like this. A better grip. I've seen people too, where they mod this, where they replace the, this with the actual ball, and they even switched out these with the Sanwa or Semitsu buttons. I might do that later. You do have to, I think, desolder the original wires from it and then solder all the new stuff, but uh, yeah. So this this joystick surprisingly was not expensive. Uh, I actually did the, the this right here. So. Oh uh, this actually cost more than this. This shipped from Japan. I think it was about $95. This was $80 ship. So that's pretty funny how the joystick costs cheaper than the thing. I guess maybe because it wasn't as popular as a joypad or this version of joystick. Something I am excited though is the Neo Geo logo and lettering is fully intact. Uh, a lot of people say uh, if you do buy this controller joystick, make sure this is not worn. Because over time, people, when people play like this, the the hand rubs against the print, and it, it can slowly wash away. So that's cool. I might go later and remove the knob and remove the four buttons and swap in with uh, actual Senitsu or Sanwa buttons, like the appropriate colors. So again, so the way you see it here, so A would be red. B will be yellow, C will be green, and D will be blue. And, but keep this either just a black ball or change this whole lever to like red, which I've seen some people do, which has a really nice touch to it. A little bit more of a personalized uh, look to it. All right, so that's that. Let me make room now for this big guy because I'm really excited about him. One second.
All right. This is probably what everybody's been waiting for this, this entire video. And I apologize if you've been watching this video since the very start of me recording, but don't worry for the, if you want to skip around, I would, I will add chapter breaks in this video. So here's this guy. Before I unbox it though, this guy was on eBay. Uh, I've been looking at Neo Geo AES consoles for about a month and a half now. And most of them on eBay, like no box, but just a console, you know, banged up, scratched up, go for about 600, maybe, maybe 500 if it's a little bit better condition. But being a mint con collector, I try to collect as mint as possible, but not breaking the bank. Right. And of course, complete. Um, one thing that I want to say is this one, even though it's very, at least based on the photo and discussion with the seller, it, it includes everything from the original release, except for the memory card. I didn't see this in his photos. So that's why I bought that memory card that I shared earlier. So now it's complete. I just had to, you know, find that, I had to source it myself, so. So here's, or, so here's the front box. Pretty shiny, I love that. It, it looks, the condition of this box is probably even better than my PS5. In the PS5 I got like two years ago. This is like easily 35 years ago. There is a little bit of um, sticker price residue here. Uh, I don't wanna try to remove it. I might rip it by accident, so I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, just think of it as a, as a battle scar. <laughs> uh, based on the photos, nothing looks ripped. Uh, this is not a rip, this is actually a crease. I already inspected it before I did this video. It's actually a crease. Um, here's the front. This is the, I think, the silver version. I think, where it comes with the, co the console, the um, arcade joystick, and memory card, which this version the seller didn't have, I guess he lost it, but I have it. The gold version is, I think, the USA version where it comes with the console, two arcade joysticks, and I think a game of your choice at the time, which is, I think, what was it, Magician Lord, and I think a sports game or something? No, no, not Magician Lord, or was it? No, it was not, no. Now I'm 19, I can't remember the year, but it was, it was, it was a different package deal. But I, this is a silver version, I think. So yeah, so Neo Geo in gold lettering, advanced entertainment system in more of a teal aqua coloring, a quantum leap forward in video entertainment, and a super close up view of the console itself, right? Here's the back side. Um, a quantum leap forward in video entertainment, logo, the contents, uh, I guess console, joystick, AC adapter, video adapter, um, can't read it, I guess paperwork, and memory card, something. Right, here are just some of the games, I guess available at launch maybe, Fairy Fairy 2, Art of Fighting, a sports soccer game, uh, The Last Resort, the wrestling game, Fire or something, I can't remember exactly, and a baseball game. And the mentioning of a, I guess it included memory card here. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, there is another variant of this console where it includes this, but the joystick is the, not this version, but the the, the bean version, the version that we just saw open, the CD controller version. And there's another version where I've seen where the box doesn't even have memory card at all. I don't know if that's in Japan or UK, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's cool to see the different variants. What is this down here? Um, let me see, zoom in for you. So this is Neo Geo Advanced entertainment system specs. CPU, uh, Z80A, 68,000, work RAM, colors display, character display, sprite size, number of sprites, sound function, and direct ROM access capability. All right. So you can tell how pristine this box is. And again, this box is better condition than my PS5. Here's a side. I can't, 
fully show it to the frontal view because I don't have enough backspace before the camera box or is hit. But you can kind of get a general idea. Oh, let me come over here. Uh, Neo Geo Zero something. Now here you can see there's two joysticks. Here's another fun fact. I didn't know this until at, around the time I bought it, but I got this model, 267, 297. This is technically the high serial number, which is I think the Series 6 or something. Um, unfortunately, uh, based on just the community and just overall production, if you can get the earlier releases like the 001 or 0, oh, wait, what is it? The Series 4 where it's like 0, 60,000 or 006,000? I can't remember. It's 60 something. Uh, those had better video output. I didn't know that. But I'm not too bit sad about it because I'm going to end up, you know, as, as I showed earlier, I'm going to do the SCART cable anyway, which is going to output amazing video. But I'm also going to do the uh, mod, the, uh, the RGB bypass, which I guess helps clean up a lot of the visual artifacts, like the, the jailbreaking. Not jailbreak, but the gel bars, the vertical bars that appear on your screen. It'll eliminate that and just other stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm also going to do the Uni BIOS mod, which is Universal Mod version 4.0. Which basically, even though this is a Japanese console, so if you if you have a Japanese console but you buy a US or UK game, the game will still be in Japanese. So there technically isn't a region lock but it's more of a language specific lock. But what the Uni, uh, Uni BIOS 4.0 does is it, it, I guess when you first boot it up, there will be a screen. It'll say, what do you want to launch this game under? UK, US, um, or Japanese. So that way, for some games, not all games, but some games you probably should play in Japanese like Metal Slug and Summer Showdown. Those games have red blood, but on the US release, yeah, even though it's, it's, it's an English translation for us Westerners, the blood is technically white sweat, which is too bad. Not every game was affected by the, the censorship, but censorship was, was ongoing back in the day because of Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, stuff like that. But yeah, so I'm gonna do those mods. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and unbox this bad guy. All right. Because this comes in a styrofoam tray as well. I want to be very careful not to crack the tray because I've seen people, um, wow, okay, that scared me already. I've seen people's, uh, uh, this tray, this part, because when we pull it out, it breaks. So I want to make sure I have enough table space to not pull it out, but, you know, kind of dump it out to prevent cracks. All right. So let me see how I'm gonna do this. Uh, because I have a lot of wires behind the camera. I don't wanna trip while unboxing it. Hopefully it's a pretty seamless opening. Not some console where it's so hard to pull out. Yeah. All right, I can hear it come out already. Oh yeah, it's coming out already. All right, good. It doesn't seem too tight. But I want to be careful because it does come with the lid, and that's that 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 sometimes can break. It's even harder because, you know what? I'm gonna actually unbox this behind the camera on the floor and then bring it back into the view. I'm so sorry. One second. It's so big. I don't want to trip. Since we know what the box looks like from five minutes ago, here is the just a styrofoam tray. Um, the box, I'll just leave it out outside the camera view since there's not much to look at. Cool. So here's the styrofoam tray of the lid. This thing looks pretty immaculate. So when I got this on eBay, the seller is, was from Japan and he missed 
translate it, the title. So I guess that's why it didn't really appear <laughs> in listings correctly. Uh, I, I, actually, I don't even know how I found out or found his listing. I just kind of stumbled upon him by accident, but he, he did a big typo. So there, was, there weren't that many hits in it. But his, his item or the listing had a typo. Um, and the way it was worded, it sounded like it was broken or for parts only. Uh, so, so I'm like, wow, why? And then, but the price was so expensive. Like, why are you asking for so much for a broken console? Because the parts of the, t the title is broken or, or, or dead, dead parts. And then he said, oh no, I, I, you know, I did a translation tool and it didn't come out correctly, but I didn't know that until you told me. So then I asked him, okay, well, um, do you have more photos of it, right? And he said, oh, this, this has only been open four times and it was actually extra stock that never sold at retailers. I'm like, oh, wow. And at the price he was asking for, like, okay, keep going. So I'm like, can you send me more photos of this, like unboxed or, you know, without the baggie and stuff? Because originally it didn't have a, uh, the photos had baggy and stuff. And he said, this is technically like dead stock, meaning again, in the business world or apparel world, uh, products or inventory that didn't sell due to not much shelf space or the store needed to clear space for other products to sell. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm really excited. So then I asked for a photo and I'm like, oh, wow, really good condition. Uh, as you can tell, <laughs> styrofoam tray looks like mint. Because usually, you know, like styrofoam back in the day, the more you handle it, the more like grooves and insets it gets, but this thing looks immaculate looking. I mean, there's like a little bit of indentures here, but it, it, it looks, it's almost invisible based on where you're looking at it, All right? Uh, I, again, it's not brand new, but I think it was a hardly used, um, used console, but the seller, for whatever reason, back in the day, trade it into the store, but the store never had on, sh on the store shelf much so, because they wanted to have it um, on original, or they wanted to sell other products instead. It didn't include the original twisty tie. I think it's original. I mean, it's black, not a rubber band, like what most retro products usually come under, but that's the original composite cable. for opening these uh, these uh, like styrofoam because there's, it's so thin it's gonna break right and be really careful here's the original uh, power AC adapter and I guess PAL3 is a model name it's pretty heavy Let me move this aside. Uh, kind of scary opening this because it's so beautiful looking. I don't want to crack it, but how is this arranged? You know what? I... Oh wow! Even the knob doesn't even have a crack. Based on when I did research, it's very common to have the joysticks cracked. The crack ball is, is pristine. Uh, I think this console comes out before this because the, the cable runs underneath the console. So let me open the console itself. Holy smokes. Here's the console, finally. Getting to it about an hour later. This thing is massive, holy crap. It's like the size of a PS5, but sideways. Oh my God. Holy shit. Can you see? Look at that. A little bit of fingerprints, but that's not scratched or anything. Maybe the lights can help you kind of see the general condition of that boy. Wow, this is sexy. Holy, here's the front. 
There's a power switch. It's funny. They use a power switch. Similar to the, I think, the Genesis. And then the uh, controller ports. And then the volume rocker. Up or down. Memory card slot. Left and right. It's not too heavy, but it is heavy. Uh, I know that sounds weird because I just countered my own comment, but here's the back side. A little bit of a uh, scratch in the back here. It's okay though. It's not like anything like to cry about, but here's the uh, AV out, DCM, and then the actual cartridge door slot. Wow, look at that. And then here's the underside. Wow. Even the underside is almost immaculate. Uh, serial number 267297. Vent ports and the little feet, I guess, is pristine. No rust anywhere. Wow, this is an amazing specimen. This is awesome. Let me set him aside. Now, Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a power cable. Hmm. One thing though, in the photo, he listed instruction manual, but I don't see it. Maybe it's underneath this. Uh, hold on, let me make more counter space. Yeah, it comes with the original, or should, maybe it's underneath this. Original manual. Oh, there it is. Original manual and um, certificate certificate of purchase, I guess. Wow, sexy. So here's the original baggie of, uh, I guess, instructions or whatnot. This thing looks brand new. Wow, sexy. All right, uh, Neo Geo Max 30 or 330 mega pro gear spec, which is the same thing you see when the intro boots up. AES, some Japanese verbiage, back. And this, uh, this is just probably just uh, operation instructions. Reset, plug it in, cartridge, uh, AC, so just, you know, user manual. Oh, here's the thing, memory card. Hey, you can use it for the console in AS, or you can transfer it to the arcade game machine. This is bad, ass. And here's your, <clears throat> I, I, I guess this is the receipt slash certificate of authenticity, right? Where the serial number, when it was purchased, Okay, so I guess at some point in 2021, this seller, the one that sold it to me, I guess purchased it from... Wait, actually, you know what? I don't know. In Japan is backwards. In the Western area, it's usually month, day, year. But I think in Japan, it's year, day, month. Or oh, I'm sorry. Uh, year, month, day. So I, I think this was purchased from this seller February 21st, 2010. Right, so that's cool. It was purchased from Famicom Shop Sunai. Sunai, I don't know, in the stamp. Awesome, yeah. So, oh, let me just show you too the general condition of the styrofoam. Very nice. There, there it is, like a subtle looking line. It's not a crack, but it looks like a crease of some sort. I don't know if you can see it, but it doesn't look cracked. It just looks kind of creased or imprinted. Yeah, so that's what imprinted. Maybe right here. Pretty mint. I'm very excited. Look at this little crud. Let me kind of remove him for one second. Um, that is just tape.
tape crud that's 30 years old. Oh my gosh. Cool. All right, well, that is the uh, pretty much the unboxing for everything I have to show you here today. Uh, stay tuned for my future episodes where I actually show some gameplay and more Neo Geo pickups and other retro game pickups as well. So let me do one last, like, I guess, if I can. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to show you all this. So here's the controller. Very good condition. Not brand new, but definitely at least a 9 out of 10 at the very least. So here's a ball I was talking about. It's not cracked. These are usually cracked over time. So it's good to see it not cracked. It's pretty heavy too. I actually have a Neo Geo X, you know, the the one that got replicated back in 2012 or so. And this one is, is yeah, you can tell it's heavier than the other one. Yeah. So here's a 15 pin. The back side. A little bit of wear on the lower feet, but no big deal. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so this is the controller, the Neo Geo AES. I have to kind of wipe it down, but there's definitely no scratches or whatnot on it here. So, uh, all right, uh, so thanks for hanging on with me, everybody, watching this. I know it's very long. I will definitely add chapter breaks in this video if you want to go back to a certain chapter point. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for future episodes of me unboxing more good retro goodies and, you know, some gaming play sessions. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have a great rest of the week, everyone.